Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. It is Friday when this video is going up, which means, as, well, pretty much always, it's time for another Obscurity in Literature. And I was racking my brain the other day, trying to think of what do I have that's not a comic book, that's not game-related in some way, shape, or form, doesn't have stat blocks, isn't in Japanese, and is something that is, you know, well, obscure. And it hit me. I'd had the book sitting in front of me for years, and I've walked past it, like, on a daily basis. <sighs> so finally, we're going to take a look at Boilerplate History's Mechanical Marvel. And you can see a photograph right here of Boilerplate. This, I thought, was an ingenious book by our authors, Paul Guinan. I don't Guinan. I, I'm... You can help me figure that out. And Anina Bennett, at least that I can pronounce. But what we have here is starting in 1893, we have the Chronicles and Adventures of the World's First Mechanical Man. And as somebody with a lifelong fondness for robots, uh, this book really hit the mark. And it's been looked at quite extensively. We start at the very beginning, as I said in 1893, with the creation of Boilerplate by his creator, Professor Campion. Introduced at the first World's Fair that had electricity. We have all kinds of stuff as he enters the limelight. <clears throat> and one of the interesting things about this book is this wonderful juxtaposition of very traditional turn-of-the-century photographs that end up having our friend Boilerplate inserted into it. And truth be told, I have left this book out on a couple of occasions, and I am not going to name names and embarrass anybody, but I did have people that I know ask me, as they weren't sure, is, is this real? Did this really exist? I, I think that's how effective this is. Uh, it's just a fun book. You know, as somebody who grew up with a, a lifelong interest in history, um, with a family that was quite familiar and loved to share that love of history with us growing up, uh, just the format itself, I mean, it looks like, you know, a typical, you know, DK books, uh, for those who are familiar, just like a, a history textbook. And... All throughout, we have all kinds of paraphernalia and assorted memorabilia, both related to boilerplate, along with all sorts of editorial illustrations. Uh, you, you've got, you know, Oz stuff, Frank L. Baum basing the likeness of the Tin Man on him. And we have just, you know, so many amazing and important events in history um, at this time. You know, the turn of the century, early 20th, late 19th century. Uh, so much stuff going on that it is just a perfect insert. You've got boilerplate going up into Alaska, up into Antarctica. And again, I don't know how well the photographs are going to translate via video but yeah boilerplate ends up in all sorts of interesting and precarious adventures I just love these old vintage looking advertisements the war in the Sudan he's off in Cairo the first auto race through Alaska. And again, I think just the, the nice off-focus, you know, glare of these old photographs and then to insert the character into these is just a fun little take. We have Roosevelt joining forces, and again, I just the, the feel of it is much like 
a history textbook. Boxing Day. Working in the coal mines. And what's interesting is this is very much written from a modern perspective, so, you know, it's much more egalitarian and, I don't know, everybody gets just coverage in this as opposed to uh, being of a very specific viewpoint. If you catch my drift, we've got him with the Rough Riders. Teddy in the Philippines here. You've got him with Tesla. My favorite part, we've got him in the Boxer Rebellion. And, you know, naturally we've got the professor that invented him here as well, but... on the walls of the city. The Carving Knife Brigade is the professor's wife and all the other officers' wives vowed to protect themselves. We've got him in the midst of the Russo-Japanese War. We've got him in New Mexico down there with uh, getting into it with Pancho Villa. Nice double page spread. And we have his escapades and adventures take us all the way up to the First World War. Where Panzerman we find the end of Boilerplate. Which is kind of cool. The later chapters are all about his influence in the world, again, you know, showing up in very famous places, Houdini, pulp novels, Heartbreakers and Boilerplate, Heartbreakers being the comic book by the author of the book, which I was familiar with, and I was like, wait, is this a real thing? I didn't even realize it, but yes, yes it is. Um... Peter Windsor McKay style, Dreams of the Rare Bit Fiend, Alex Toth style, late 60s Hanna Barbera type uh, design sheets with Zsa Zsa Gabor, no less. I, I personally like this page right here, as you've got all these various collectibles based on the old Yonezawa tin toy robots. That's a great one. In print. I mean, these these are the kinds of books I had growing up. I had so many books on robots as a child. Boilerplate's Brethren, the Mechanical Men Through History. The chess player I can remember seeing in many of those books. Good times to be had by all. Then we have a nice illustrated timeline of everything that happens throughout the book. Boilerplate today. So just a fun, different, and interesting book, especially if you're a history buff, if you're a fan of steampunk. Uh, our boat right here, actually, you'll notice has uh, airship ports. That's something that's going to show up in the sequel, which we'll get around to sometime. But just something totally different, and I, I think the usage of material from the appropriate time era uh, intermingled with our friend Boilerplate here superimposed is just a really cool touch. And you know what? If it lights the fuse you know, with its originality and somebody that may not necessarily have much of an interest in history to learn about this stuff, I think that's even cooler. So every now and then I'll leave this out for when kids come over. And it's always, it's always an entertaining one to have people look at and glance at and have to really do a double take to make sure, is this real? 
Yeah, so fun times. Uh, this should be able to be found for a pretty reasonable price. I don't know if it's still in print, but I did do a quick browse through Amazon. So uh, we'll put a link down below if you want to grab a copy. I don't think there are any soft covers. My hard cover is getting pretty banged up from flipping through it so many times and having some kids that have looked at it be a little bit rougher than I would have appreciated. But after pulling this off the shelf, after painting a bunch of Chinese boxers and other various turn-of-the-century types, I, I can't help but I'm going to have to find a specific boilerplate style model, at least to get printed off uh, the printer. If you guys have any leads on that, any good suggestions, I am all ears. Be sure to put them in the comments down below. I will go track one down. Uh, I'm going to have to have one for like hanging out with my uh, British and Germans and my, my, my Teddy Roosevelt stand-in. Those mechanical limbs. Anyway, yeah, fun stuff. And like I said, we'll get around to the sequel one of these days as well. So, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.